<laughs> Why are you doing that? Howdy, y'all. Hello. Wow, seven people there already. Oh. I look like a hippie. <laughs> It's long I hair. thought you said you were going to keep growing it. See yeah, I'm going to grow it out. Gets. I'm going to look like a surfer. <laughs> that'll be that'll be funny. Oh, let's see. Ooh. So, hello everyone. Hello, Jerry. Um, I see the upside and downside in there. Bill and Vaughn might just be Bill. Um, looking at your thumbnail Hi, made me wonder when will you be back? Hi, sorry. For the sorry. Floor? Not sure. Not sure. We got to take the mulch out. We got to like scrape all that up yeah, and probably get, should. get all that out. Probably should. I was looking at that today and I was like, I don't know. I mean, it does break down, but probably I, should. I think that we will probably do that before the trusses, right? Because it's going to oh, be, no. you trip on it. You'll trip on a the, trip mulch? On the mulch. No. I'm constantly no. tripping on those little Hey, logs. Sherry. Hey, Mom. Hello, Shirley. No, we will not be doing it that soon. Uh, okay. Probably after... After trusses. I have on the visor After roof. Because, uh, right now, it's all about the roof. Okay. It's all about that roof. It's all about that roof. Because, you know, I don't know how bad it is and whether it's accurate or not, but there's rain in the forecast. It's it's a little ways out, and it may or may not happen, mm -hmm. and it may or may not be hard, but still, uh, we got to get that roof on, so. Yes, we do. Uh, getting ready to take my 16-year to a dance. I have been, oh, Oh, wow. a, a son? Doesn't say. Uh, so. Okay. Oh, Sherry says I'm not. Officially. So, yeah. Okay, so we're started. So, what's been going on? Happy, happy, happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy holidays. Hopefully, everybody's happy holidays. having a good time and a chance to visit or do whatever they wanted to do. <laughs> Maybe not visit. Um, what's going on? Uh, you've been working a lot. I've been working a lot. Hey, Melinda. Hey, Melinda, Dad. Dad. So Brian's uh, been doing a lot of screwing, yeah, hammering, so, ladder stuff. So uh, you know, I was I was pretty regular with the the videos once a week, and I so I didn't put out a video yesterday, so I apologize. But um, I had with kind the of a well, holidays it wasn't happened. necessarily the holiday. Um. We had another video kind of largely ready to go, but then I got hung up on the uh, that step, right? So uh, in case, I'm not sure who knows, but uh, Hi, hey, Melissa and Taylor. Melissa. All right, so some of you may know this, but I'm not sure. Um, when I started, so I put the, I can't remember what the last video showed. I think it showed the whole box beam getting put together, right? So the box beam was all assembled, but uh, we hadn't, we hadn't strapped it and pulled it down yet. So that was the next step, which I got up, started on right away. And I had a bunch of that video kind of ready to go, but I wanted to finish that video up. And what happened right around Thanksgiving, uh, right around before we took a little break, we got a little bit of rain. It was very little, but we still had to stop and cover up and everything. And that's kind of a chore. Yeah. And we didn't um, get any real footage. And we of did. That. And we were gone for like two days for Thanksgiving. So, but right around that time, we also realized um, some of you may have anticipated this. Bill and Yvonne may have seen this coming. Um, the bales, you know, because they're not uh, uniform, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, that's not a big deal. You have to kind of work around that. I didn't anticipate. I should have. But, you know, I did my test, my compression test that said that I'd get, you know, three to four inches of compression. And uh, so so I built the bales up kind of three to four inches above the bucks and said, okay, that'll be good. Well, when I started to do the, the actual compression, when I, when I strapped everything over, you know, so that took a while to strap everything down. And then I just started real slow, little by little inside, outside, moving around the structure, right? You don't want to just pull one section down all at once. Cause the box beam now was all connected as one piece. So, you know, I didn't want to just pull it down. And so, so I went, I worked around real slow but after a short while, it became clear that some of them, you know, came down. I wouldn't say any of them came down easily, but some of them definitely, you know, it was clear they were going to kind of reach the box beam they, or the buck. Um, they were they were coming down and then others just didn't want to come down. And as I got closer and closer, some of them kept coming down towards the buck. And I was like, OK, that one's going to get there. So I would move somewhere else. 
And there were sections that no matter how hard I pulled them and the, the strap got really tight, they just weren't coming down and they were a good, maybe two inches away from the buck. So now I've got this roof, you know, this box beam that's doing this. And, uh, and you know, it wasn't meeting the bucks in certain spots. So I was like, Oh man, what do I do? So, you know, it's, it was, you know, this was the first time I had really strapped down hard, um, other than my one test, which didn't have really an issue. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, I was worried, you know, it's hard to tell when to stop, right? Well, how much, how far will it go? Well, I'll just keep going, when it, right? When it breaks. <laughs> so, yeah. So I thought, oh, at some point, you know, I thought I'll just keep cranking these things. And, um, hi, Lisa. Some of them did break. Oh, so, hi, Lisa. yeah. So one finally broke. And what happened again, uh, snaps. Uh, Billy and Vaughn might not be surprised by this. I don't know if they encountered this or not, but the weak point in this setup is the, the buckle. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I I agree, Bill, that, that it will it will go more. Um, but That's I wanted to get I it I wanted saying. to get it as tight as I could, right? So I wanted it to give as much support as I can, right? Because the bucks are in there too. So if the if the bales don't support completely, um, if they're not completely compressed or compressed really well, um, then they really won't support as much as the bucks, and then that'll be that'll put more weight on the bucks. And anyway, I wanted them to be as compressed as they could be. Anyway, when I, when I was having trouble getting there and I kept, I kept cranking, a buckle broke. That was the first thing to happen. Actually, a buckle bent was the first one to happen. The buckle broke, uh, bent and the whole strap kind of came out of it. Um, later on, I actually did. I broke a buckle. It actually snapped and popped off. Um, I also did, and this happened a couple of times, I'd say two or three times, not a bunch of times, but two or three times. And, uh, I did actually break one strap, but my straps had been out for a little while and exposed to the to the elements. So one strap actually popped once. Oh, it's Henry um, and Irene. Hi, Henry and Irene. Hey, Henry and Irene. Um, I think I showed in one of my videos using a pair of channel locks. Yes, I remember that um, oh, because yeah. they kind of give the as the sure as the, the strap strapping. You know, out. if if the strapping kind of moves around on the buck from one side to the, I'm sorry, the buckle from one side to the other, the buckle starts to kind of turn and then it stretches out. So yeah, if you, if you squeeze things together and if you keep that strap nice and straight on the buckle as you go. So I try to get more careful about that because definitely as the, if the buckle gets turned a little bit, it definitely will give a lot faster. Um, anyway. Uh, so anyway, I did. So anyway, I, I can't, so I knew that I had gone as far as it could go. Right. So for a while I was like, well, how far will it go? I don't know. So I just thought I'd keep going. Well, I did finally find the breaking point and I was still not to the bucks, right? I wasn't squeezed down to the bucks. So I look at that for a while and I think about that for a while. Um, Those yeah, they definitely do. Pretty um, so I look at it for a while and I'm like, well, what can I do about this? You know, I could kind of try to fill the gap that's there, but that still leaves my roof a little uh, like that. So is that when you decided to go around with the chainsaw? Yeah. So what I decided to do, and I wasn't really was excited a about dirty it. Dirty job. I wasn't really excited about it, but it was the only solution I could come up with was to actually remove some straw. Well, you know, I had a couple of options. You know, there's a there's a, a seam, I guess, as you go up because uh, you know you know there's seams between each of the bales, so I could kind of try and get in between the bales and kind of sort of saw or something or 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 uh, try and take some of that straw out. But then there's there's rebar in there and everything, and the strapping was in there. So I was like, ah, I don't really want to do that. Well, I had already cut the top bales in half, kind of horizontally. So, and in some places, like I said, there was a good like two inches left to go, or at least an inch, and in some cases a little more. And I was like, well, uh, you know, I actually started with a handsaw, and I started handsawing, basically just started at the buck, and I know I've squeezed all I can. So I obviously I don't want it to, I don't want to be less than the buck. But um, so I start kind of at the back. So you start probably just above the buck. Um, and I start cutting with a handsaw because I think it'll be, you know, less likely to kind of catch something or whatever. I did that for a little bit and it was a super pain, super slow. wasn't really going very far. I mean, it does cut straw, obviously, but it was really slow. And so and good, I got the chainsaw and out and but I'm on a ladder. You know, it's right in front of my face, basically, because I'm on the ladder and I'm chainsawing sideways in on the bale. You know, I'm under the buck or I'm under the, sorry, I'm under the box beam. 
and I'm trying to chop out a tiny little bit of straw and there's, you know, there's straps in the way that I don't want to hit. And there is rebar buried in there that I don't want to hit. And so I started this process and it was, very slow it and was as painful and dirty and horrible as I thought it would be, <laughs> but he finally got done. it worked. <laughs> so, and it was really the best slash only solution. It really was the only thing I could come up with to actually get the, the, the box beam to come down it looks other than really good other now. than kind of waiting for the weight of the roof which i considered but how do i wait for the weight of the roof because i need to be able to attach things and once i put the roof on i won't have the same kind of access to attach the things you know so so i couldn't i knew as bill said correctly the weight of the roof will put more stress on this and will squeeze it more and i knew that but i can't not connect these things right so i couldn't i couldn't have it still be not squeezed. So anyway, so that's what I did. Well, that took several days, of course. It was a slow, painful process. It was very, you know, the good thing was that I could kind of pick and choose where I took stuff out. Cause like I said, some of the bales just squeezed down. Some of them didn't. So I could, I could pick and choose where I did it. But anyway, that slowed me way down, of course. And that allowed me to kind of not finish that step, which is why I didn't finish that video because I never really finished the, that, piece of the of the project so i will finish so i have finished um just a, a day or two ago i guess i finished that a day or two ago and then i started actually attaching the box beam to the box obviously it's already attached to everything with the strapping it's attached to the bales in a sense because it's strapped to them but uh when it reached when it finally did reach down to the bucks um to yesterday and today i guess i started yesterday and finished today I actually connected the box beam to the bucks, you know, to the king studs, to the cripple studs that are over the headers of the bucks, of the windows and the doors and everything. So as of this evening, just right before the video here, really, or right before the, the live, um, I finished connecting the box beam to the uh, all of the bucks. So we're ready to build our pony wall, our short wall on the high side. So that will be the next step. I'm going to draw that real quick tonight in SketchUp. Just to kind of get an idea, it's there's nothing real exciting about it, but uh, just to get an idea of how much material I need to go grab and stuff. So um, it should be all two by fours, basically just two by fours and nails. It should be pretty much that simple. So, um, but I got to figure out kind of how much it'll take, uh, and I think I'll run and get that material tomorrow. And I'm hoping it shouldn't take more than a day or two to put that together and put it up there. It's, you know, I've built stud walls before, and this thing is tiny, so it's long but it's very short. So, um, so hopefully that won't be very difficult. How many feet is it? Uh, it's 28 and a half inches, I believe. So, okay, so uh, almost two and a half feet. Uh, so it's really small. So it shouldn't be very tough to do, but it is what is creating kind of our high side so that our rafters or rafters, um, roof. trusses can sit. Oh, so, so the roof is slanted right? yeah. to catch. Water. So that's that. That's where we're at. That's why I didn't really get a video out because I kind of didn't finish the step I was on. So, um, like I said, I just finished it, I think maybe yesterday. Um, but anyway, I'll be finishing up that video real soon and that'll show the actual completion and attaching of the box beam. Um, so that's that. Hi, Michael. Okay. I think the bale trimming with the chainsaw was a great solution, Michael. This demonstrates how being in this situation at the moment really is valuable in coming up with solutions. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny, you know, as much as I, as you guys have seen uh, on my videos and on the live, I was all worried about the bales being short and I was right to be worried about it, right? It was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen and it did happen. Um, and we eventually came up with what I thought was a good solution by adding more bail. Then it was too tough. Um, <laughs> but I, funny, as much as I worried about that and worked a solution, I never considered that once I put the extra bales on there, uh, I never considered that it wouldn't come down. <laughs> I just didn't consider that. Even though I know that every bale is different. Um, I, I, I just thought they'd all I come asked, down. I think, so. you, I think I asked you that. Really? What if it was too tall? I just think. Why'd you cut them so tall? <laughs> <laughs> I, if you, you were afraid of cutting them too much. Oh, so you, well, I'm, I made them go right to where I thought they should be. You know, three, four inches above the buck. And I knew based on a test, I believed I could get th three to four inches of compression. Well, and when I didn't get it in some spots, I went, oh, no, I didn't consider not being able to get that much compression. There's so. a bright side. <clears throat> we have plenty of chopped straw. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> so, yeah, I ate some of it. Well, <laughs> I think he inhaled a lot of uh, it. I don't think, unfortunately, I don't think but we got did. a video. I was never real no, anxious. No, you put on a mask. I think I, I did. did get a picture of you with the mask. I was never real anxious to put on to to actually call you to videotape me or to set up a video of me with a chainsaw just blowing straw in my face. <laughs> um, so I don't know if we got an action shot of it, but it was messy. Um, and you know, I was on a ladder. It it was somewhat dangerous, I'm sure, but I was pretty careful and I made it through. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. But good news. Thanks, Mom. They're very tight. The walls they are, are solid. great. So as I was attaching to the bucks today, obviously I was doing a bunch of checks for plum and square and flush of certain things and making sure everything fell in the right position and everything. While I was doing that, I removed, at least temporarily, they're still out there, but I removed the braces that were on, the, uh, on all the bucks. So, you know, before I put the box beam on, the the only thing that gave the walls any stability really was was the bracing on the bucks um so you know there's rebar driven down but it's it's not real big rebar and i mean it, it would it would maybe stop them from falling off of each other but it would let the wall still kind of move quite a bit as the one west wall which doesn't have any real bucks it has a little kind of cheater in it but um it did move quite a bit right but the good news is as soon as I started pulling down that box beam, it tightened up real fast. So I actually undid the braces today to move things just slightly in the different positions. Um, but even with the bra the braces are detached right now. They're still out there in case I want to connect them. But right now they're detached. So there's no bracing on any of the walls and they're pretty darn solid. They'll, they'll shake the tiniest bit, but uh, that should go away when the are you uh, trusses are added. Are you strategizing? Um, have you been strategizing <laughs> on how the roof trusses will go up? Oh, I've been thinking about it. Um, I mean, the good news is, you know, they're not, if you didn't already know this, you know, they're not, I think when people hear truss, they think gabled trusses and they're big and they've got these big slopes to them and they're kind of, they're really awkward and heavy and These aren't not like that ours that. aren't. I mean, ours are very long. But, but just they're, like this. they're really kind of right? simple. It's it's really just a, a big rafter, really. It's kind of like the shed. Um, uh, so it'll be a little well. heavy, so we'll need a few hands. But uh, but other than that, other than being a little awkward and heavy, um, a little heavy, not super heavy, but with a couple of hands, I think we can get them into place and get them on there. Um, I did, you know, I don't know if this actually buys anything structurally, but I did um, just as a, I don't know, just because... When I built the box beam, the box beam, yeah, the box beam, I actually set up the cross members. So the box beam is just some two by fours laid on end with some some kind of let's say rungs along the way. If you think of it as a ladder, um, uh, hi so, Ben. So uh, ben I placed those those rungs, those cross member supports. I mean, it didn't really matter where I placed them. I could kind of choose where I wanted to place them. So what I did was I placed them right where the uh, trusses will fall. So on the low side of the wall, the trusses will actually sit right on those uh, cross members because the truss actually has a seat Ooh. cut on the bottom of it. So it will actually sit flat on the low side across the whole box beam, the whole 15 inches. So I don't have to like measure or mark or anything like that. The trusses will sit right. I know where they all go because that's where the cross members are. Fire retardant. Um, I'll, I'll get to it. I did. Hi, Shalisa. I did the same <laughs> thing on the high side of the wall, which then I realized doesn't really accomplish the same thing because I'll have this little half wall, kind of raising them up off the thing. But hi, still, Wayne. Um, <laughs> Wayne Peterson. So, uh, so that's a little bit of the strategy. Uh, will you use a fire retardant spray or something like that? Not planning on it. Um, as far as the bales, it shouldn't be necessary. Um, I don't know about the wood of the roof, but. Uh, I don't think I don't think they do anything like that in a normal house, do they? Um, I don't know. That's something I hadn't thought about. Glad you won't have to lean against the wall while in the kitchen cooking. <laughs> Mom says. Uh, Bill says I would suggest leaving the braces up until the trusses are in place. The trusses are going to add the lateral stability. You're going to need to keep those walls from moving. I agree, Bill. Which is why I said I didn't take them away completely. I mean, they're still kind of they're right where they were. I just I just undid them so that I could get a tiny bit of movement in the wall when I wanted something to line up. But I didn't pull them out because I thought. I mean, I was pleasantly surprised at how stiff the walls were 
But I also thought the same way you just said, I thought it's probably a good idea until the trusses are up to actually have these things kind of attached and really kind of rock solid in place. So I'll probably reattach those braces tomorrow. But uh, I just, I was pleasantly surprised at how stiff the walls were. Um, it was nice. So, but I'm, I agree. I'm I agree afraid you. you're going to trip on those. When those, uh, the, those braces, they all go to the inside of the, of the house. So there's, it's, it's dangerous in there. <laughs> and of course, um, when we're bringing the trusses in and trying to put them up, that's going to be kind of a pain, but I mean, we can work around. What them, are but the it's... purpose of those metal stakes that are beside the, those, uh, well, that's boards. what the brace is attached to. So, the, so oh, each okay. of the braces is attached to a stake in the ground and then attached to the, the buck. So, yeah. So there's all these, there's all these braces, you know, these two by four braces running from the bucks into the, into the middle of the house. And each, each brace is attached to a stake. A metal um, stake. Um, and I ran um, into one. Oh, I've kicked a, them many a times. times. Uh, so I, I have, I legs. have big cuts and bruises on my legs from them. It's, and I know they're there and oh I still my, kick them. Dino. So Hi, I'm, Dino. I'm looking forward to getting rid of them, but I agree with you, Bill. I, I should have them there. It's going to be so um, roomy in there. <laughs> it's going to be, a, it's going to be a big difference. Hey, Dean. I can't wait um, for that. Hi, Wayne and Shalisa. It's going to be very exciting when we get that. Anyway, the trust is on. that's what's going on. Time for dinner, guys. Thanks for uh, stopping thanks by. Thanks for coming, y'all. Henry and Irene. Henry and Irene. We'll um, watch the re replay. <laughs> so that's, I think that's everything that's been going on. Again, I was bummed. I, I, I've been liking getting on a video. I like getting on a video a day before the live so that it kind of gives us something to talk about and you can see the latest progress. But I, you know, that's why I missed it. Um, I think you missed it because I got hung up on a step um, about backfilling there with the floor. I, I, I don't know, Bill. I, the answer is I don't know. Um, I are you asking because you have some advice or are you just curious? Because I actually don't know. Um, um, we will be backfilling it eventually. Well, definitely. Sure. But I haven't really thought about when. Um, Cynthia says, are you going to have a truth window? We definitely will somewhere. Oh, hi, Cynthia. Um, either a window or a door. Yes, we um, will. We definitely. Like little door. But uh, I think yes, I we definitely have will. one in the living room and in the bedroom. Maybe. maybe. Um, how's the weather now? Weather's great. We did get a tiny bit of rain right around, right before Thanksgiving. So we yeah. did get out there. That was another thing that slowed us down. Of course. Um, we covered it up with tarps. It's that tough. Was fun. <laughs> it's tough. The two of us. Um, uh... yeah. I only asked because I was wondering how you're going to get the dirt inside the walls. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I've thought about that. It's probably going to be, <laughs> what we'll probably do is we'll probably uh, drop a bunch of dirt outside, which we actually need a bunch of dirt outside anyway, because around the foundation, I want to kind of backfill more around that foundation. Um, but we'll probably have a bunch of dirt dropped outside and we'll probably kind of wheelbarrow it or shovel it, depending on how far it has to go. But we'll just kind of wheelbarrow in and out, probably. In a double doors. Um, that's my guess. It'll be a little bit of a hassle, but it'd be nice if that could have been full beforehand. But at the time, I didn't know if I wanted to fill it up all the way. And anyway, it is what it is. But uh, do you have to worry about your water freezing in the winter? I don't think that we're going to have to worry now. Uh, well, for now, fingers crossed the way we're doing it now, we're going to hope that um, it's been really nice the way we've been doing. We've been filling it up in the yeah, uh, with the hose every it's a, three it's days. It's a minor inconvenience to fill it up. But, you know, once we've filled it up, you know, we have less worries about it, you know, with the yeah. piping and everything. Since it's in under the trailer, it doesn't really freeze. We're so. hoping that it won't freeze underneath the trailer. We haven't had a big time freeze yet. We We've dropped below freezing a little bit, but uh, we haven't had a really bad one. Um, what's a truth mom says, window? what's a truth window? <laughs> a truth window is proof of what's behind the it's plaster. It's a little frame so, that yeah. shows the straw, the actual So you can either straw. just kind of leave it exposed with sort of a frame around it. You can put glass there I'll with a frame around it. Plexiglass. Or you, some good. people will make a door that you can open, a little one. Basically, it's so that you can see that the straw is there. Because once we plaster over it, you know. Somebody might say, well, I don't know. There's straw back there. So it's just proof that there's straw behind I it. I want to do a so. cool little frame, kind of like what they have on, uh, you know, on the show Friends, that little frame they have on the door. You can order it on Amazon. I've already looked uh -huh. into it. But that's that's one. And then on the other one, I haven't decided. 
Uh Ben says, I wonder if you can dig to store it below the frost line. I don't know if that would work. Our frost line, by the way, is about zero around here. So yeah, we don't get a whole lot of anything that's underground at all is, (laughs) is pretty safe. If you put any, if you put it underground, it's pretty much safe. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think that I forgot about people maybe not knowing what a truth window was, but, um, it's cute. So yeah, um, you know, obviously we're not, we haven't switched to the, the ultimate piping situation with water from the, the, uh, the, uh, barrels out here, the big, the big, uh, barrels, but, uh, for the time being storing it in the RV (laughs) or under the RV, we're hoping that our winter might be a little better in terms of freezing. So we'll see freezing water, but we'll see. Fingers crossed. It's been all right so far, but we've only just barely dipped we, below freezing. A few we times. only turn the water on at the well house when we have to fill up. So we're hoping since the water isn't in there all the time, I don't know, will it still like explode the well, pipe? Like it, it, sh- it shouldn't. So, so there is still water in that pipe. You know, it's a long pipe from here to Very the, to the well house. That's why we want it. It's a, I think it's a quarter of a mile or something. Yeah. Like we that. don't want to be a part um, of that. Now, there is still water in it because we haven't uh, drained it, which if you remember last year, I actually set up a system to where I could drain that thing. Yeah. And at the time, I thought it was the right thing to do. And it and it was nice. And we did do that a few times when we knew it was going to freeze. But what I think I've learned since then is just shutting the water off the way we do and and leaving a little space uh, in that in that water line. Um, leaves enough space for it to to expand a little bit. And actually, even the uh, uh, the uh, ranch pipe will will expand a little bit. It won't kind of burst. Uh, it's the fittings that can be trouble. Hello. Um, but is uh, that is that um Hey Sarge. Sarge, is that um I can't think of his name. I know he's commented a bunch of times, especially recently, but I'm I don't know him as more than Sarge. Uh, <laughs> um is Yvonne the instructor for the cop? We've definitely we've learned from Bill and Yvonne a little bit already. Um we had a little practice with uh with Jim. Yeah. Um we've Hi, had some practice Omega, in the past at, at, at some other things. We've volunteered a few times and our, our course yeah, that we done... took. So we've had some practice, <laughs> but we haven't done any here firsthand yet. So well, we've made we'll some. We'll see how our own mix is. Uh, yeah, we have played around with our dirt a little I've bit. I've played but... around with it. I made the pizza oven, which held together. So I made two pizza ovens actually. Mom's at I thought a truth. Oh, hi, Omega Royal. Um, I thought a truth window might be looking outside and actually knowing what the weather is instead of relying on the not only accurate weather report. <laughs> yes, that is also truth a truth window. window. <laughs> I'm here to make complaints, <laughs> complaints and demands. I know. Sarge, Sarge was, uh, he, he was happy that we got uh, started again after taking a big break, mostly over the uh, uh, monsoon, which we did for sure. But we're, we're back at it. Um, yeah, he's been working his butt off. Um, oh, I boy. wish I, I could help more, but I um, I do, I give him all his meals and I, well, I did some wash today. I've been, uh, I've, I've been, been working of, out a lot. I've been kind of starting late in the day because it's pretty chilly in the mornings. Um, even though some days I should get out there in the morning and I, a lot of times it's, well, most times it actually gets warmer outside before it gets warm in here. Hmm. But uh, I do tend to start a little late uh, because it's chilly out. And I've been going late. So there were several nights where I basically didn't quit until I couldn't see anymore. So I've had some pretty solid work days. Again, the weather's been great for it. So that's been lucky. Um, What do you think of geodesic domes? Awesome. Awesome. I don't really know much about I mean, isn't that, I mean, what's special about, well, it's a good question. I mean, what's, I I, I don't think there'd be any real difference in what, uh, say, uh, Jim and Jessica are doing their dome, basically like an igloo. Off-grid Patriot. Hello. That's, that's awesome. First time I've heard of a truth window. Oh. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yep. It's quite common in a, uh, in a straw bale home, uh, to, to, just to prove to people that, what's behind it. And uh, actually a lot of earth ships do it too, because earth ships are made out of tires and they'll do the same thing in an earth ship just to show you that there's tires there. Yes. I Um, made up one pizza oven and then I kind of like tore it down because it didn't work and I remade it and this one actually works. And I haven't, I made one pizza in it. This oven definitely works. It's very, 
it's not very small. It would be like a make a tiny pizza. It's not very. I mean, big. it's not very big. <laughs> it is a little small. It yeah. Is so her small. next oven, this oven is functional. It definitely works, but it's a little small. You can't put like a big pizza in it or anything. Um, Sarge says, you guys are doing a great job. I respect that Brian does all the heavy work and allows Pam to do, to do rest. <laughs> I will be helping. Um, I mean, that is. I do. I do. You do know, some things. I appreciate. Oh, she definitely <laughs> does. Yeah. So I forget who it was. Somebody made a comment. I, I don't know if it was Sarge or not, and I'm Dave, not giving him a hard time. David, I think, Somebody David. said you need to let Pam do more or whatever. You know, we do. We have found our own way of working. Um, I don't want Pam get hurt, to get hurt by anything. And although me working on my own does make it a little slow, it's actually because of the way I work, it's kind of good for me because I tend to work slow anyways because I like to think so much about stuff. So I it doesn't going, hurt that it's moving um, slowly. The only the only drawback is potential weather. I have been doing so, like all the shopping. And but she also all does. Cooking, yeah, she does do. all the background stuff to allow me to stay out there until, you know, I can't see anymore and I can come in and eat dinner and I don't have to worry about stuff like that. So I cleaned out the RV. She today. is definitely doing a lot of other things that make that possible. So we, and uh, I've been trying to do every day. Well, I do uh, lifting weights and I go for a walk and I ride my, I ride my bike. I did all three of those today. So I'm very wow. busy. I stay very busy. Pam has lost some weight. Sarge said you've lost some weight. I have been working. She has lost some hard. weight. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think I've lost about 10, 10 pounds. It's very difficult when you get my age to lose weight, which is 56. I meant to weigh myself. I never even weigh myself. I don't, I don't even know what I weigh. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, wait. So just in case, I don't, I don't think any, I think most people on here get it, but I will get the comment every once in a while that, uh, you know, Pam needs to do more work or Pam's not holding up her. And I'm like, no, she's, she's doing the things we need her to do. So it's perfectly fine. We've got a nice, a nice system worked out. Believe me. Um, I'm, I'm, do I, do, I always ask you, is there something oh yeah. that I can oh yeah. do? Um, I definitely needed her Thank for you, the tarps. Sarge. We needed, we needed hands for the tarps. I tried to do the tarps myself and I couldn't do it with the wind blowing and everything. Oh, I so did she had to kind of catch it on one side. That was, it, it took us both hours to put tarps on um so it should be much easier when the roof is on just to do kind of the outside tarp so that's why i want to get to the roof because tarping is really difficult um <laughs> <laughs> he has been we'll wearing see. a hat all day we'll so see. and this is oh wait no you just took a shower no i did just take a shower so this is it but um, but he doesn't do any i told him put some gel on it or we'll something, see if but... that's my winter hairstyle everybody keeps everybody always tells me that i should grow my hair out but a, what they don't know is when my hair grows out it just it becomes like a chia chia, chia pet, head chia pet <laughs> So uh, I don't know how long I'll wait before I make her give me a haircut, but she didn't want to give me a haircut recently. So it's getting a little long. Um, you got to ask me. Dean asked, what are your night temps in North Cochise County? Um, I think last night. Oh, I can't remember. I didn't look this morning, but the night before last, we dipped below um, 30. It I looked was, around it was like 8, 28, 29. I looked around 8 a.m. And I assume and it was this morning was 43. probably. Actually. Well, it's at 8 a.m. Yeah, this morning was probably a little warmer, I think, because we might have had some cloud cover. Um, but on a clear night, right now, we're <laughs> around 30, give or take. We are freezing just barely. Um, Bill, you can put some gel on your beard. <laughs> I should have such problems. <laughs> gel on your um, beard. Oh, you're so sweet, Brian. And yes, Pam, you have to wear a lot of hats to keep things running. Can you oh, yeah. Jim from Green um, Dream? So project. let's see what Ben's, or I'm sorry, Michael. Ben, I had a oh, cover. Oh, hi, Matt. Oh, I had a cover at Shed for Matt 17 White. years. Had to replace the tarp. Yeah. Our tarps, well, our tarps get beat up here big time um, from the sun. So uh, Jim will probably come over when the trusses happen. I ben think. says that, Michael Chogo, you made a geodesic dome. Oh. Um, can't you guys have Jim from GDP come over with help with just that part of the build? Um, um Don has been on a trip. Oh. Hey Matt, welcome again. Uh hi. Hi, I said hi, Matt already. Oh, I missed it. Um, so Don uh is affordable desert living and yeah, I think he's um I think Don has I said happy maybe Thanksgiving to him and he's I think he's out like looking at birds I think Don had a visitor and he might be doing some birding. But yeah, he's, I I think we knew right around Thanksgiving, he was having a visitor. So I think he's been, he's been kind of vacationing, I think. Are <laughs> um, we, uh, 
Were we going to try to like... Do you we have a tarp brand try. for it that you can recommend? Oh. Are we going to try to like keep it at, at 30 minutes tonight? Yeah, we don't, we don't have to go much longer. I mean, that's whatever anybody wants to know. But uh, um, so... I've been having trouble sleeping. Ben, and uh, I'm exhausted. on the point of tarps, I want to point out, um, uh, you know, I've, there are some decent tarps out there and you can look for some... Um, uh, UV resistant tarps. Um, I don't know, brand name off the top of my head, Bill May, but uh, I can tell you, I don't know if anybody's had experience with these uh, uh, billboard tarps. Uh, just in case you didn't know, most of the billboards that you see are actually tarps, you know, painted tarps that they just spread over. They're not actually painted on the thing. They're, they're just a tarp. Um, so I bought a handful of them because I had heard of that. Um, I bought some in Phoenix. Basically, when they take them down, they'll, they'll sell them. They are thick, strong, um, big. So they're they great. Now, depending grommets. on what you're trying to do, they do not have grommets. But they um, have you can, little You can make things. your own grommets. They or, have little uh, handheld things. Yeah, they have kind of little... Uh, Slits. Yeah, they have like a pocket uh, to put either a metal tube through or something. So in case oh, you want to... do that. But uh, if anybody's looking for strong tarps, now I don't know how they'll hold up in the sun necessarily, but they are... They are thick and strong and heavy duty. So I've been really pleased with those. Um, they're almost a little bit of a pain to work with because they're so heavy, but they are heavy. They're very yeah, heavy. They are. But we were, I mean, with the two of us, we managed to get it. We finally got a system down. Like I said, the sun, the sun might still beat them up and they might not connect the same way some other tarps do, but you can kind of make it work if you, if you kind of make your own grommets and stuff. But just, just a thought for anybody out there who wants a tough, heavy duty tarp, those billboard tarps are serious. So for the right application, it's, it's a really good, I think it's a really good thing. Um, so, uh, we miss any questions? uh, Ben's talking about, a uh, 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 kind of a tarp shed, I think. Um, so that's fine. Uh, blah, blah, blah. That's a good idea. Typically the triple layer tarps are much better than normal tarps. Yeah. I think those add tarps probably great. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how it compares, you know, I've been doing some shopping recently and, you know, in your Walmarts and whatever, they've got their light duty, medium duty, heavy duty. So oh, I think are, they're even heavier than heavy duty. Some, yeah. I bought a couple of tarps from Walmart, kind of a just in case. And I thought if I didn't use them, I'd return them. And I'm thinking of returning some. So Queen of Tarps. That's a good name. <laughs> they sell tarps uh -huh. for the five years. I think I have, and I think I got it from you, Bill. I think I did do one of those um, for the the uh, uh, the garage in a box thing we had. And the tarp held up. I'm actually, I'm using it for some cover out oh, here. Yeah. But uh, the, the garage in a box still kind of had a problem. But that tarp did survive. Um, so yeah, that was nice. Um, anyway, that's about it. Uh, yeah, we were going to try and keep it a little shorter tonight. That's because I kind of just got done, just got out of the shower right before the live here. Um, but I mean, if anybody has anything to ask or say, feel free, but, uh, we were going to cut it a little bit short tonight. We're pushing 40 now. So anything anybody wants to know, I think that catches everybody up. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. The next step, hopefully pretty quickly, a uh, pretty quick turnaround on it will be the little, the, the pony wall. Um, see you, Bill. Uh, acrylic fabric umbrella. Thank yeah, you, Yeah, sure, guys. Your, your shade. You're welcome. Kind of like shade, almost like shade um, screens. When we'll, we're, um, we were shooting for every Tuesday. How long before we have next video? Yeah, I was, and I was doing it pretty good. I, I like to get them out on Tuesdays, the day before this live. So that it gives you something to see so that you can see the progress up to right before the live. And we can kind of, that'll be kind of what we talk about in the live. My goal is usually to get them out on Tuesdays. Um, I missed this last one. I don't know whether I'll get one out right away because I did finally finish Fine. that step. I might get one out in the next couple of days, but uh, I like to do those Tuesdays. I haven't kind of come out and said that because then when I miss, I'll feel bad. Matt, but uh, Matt says, that's what I like to try and do. from compressing with the strapping? Learning from compressing with the strapping. Yeah, I mean, it went largely like I thought it would. But again, I can't believe I didn't consider the possibility that, uh, well, Matt may, may have missed some of the discussion earlier. Um, I don't know if he was on here at that time. But um, yeah, I, I knew that I was going to have that problem of falling short of where I wanted to be. But then when I decided to go taller, I was I was actually surprised that I 
some of them didn't compress down. Oh, Ar and, Arizona Homestead. Hey, Warren. Project. Warren. No problem. Hi. We were just about to, um, he was just wrapping it up. <sighs> see you, Wayne. Oh, I'm sorry. No, he's. Oh. I thought he was saying he was leaving, but he says he tries to see the lines more than the videos. Because <laughs> um, um, the, the internet with the videos. Um, so, yeah, the, the strapping went pretty good. Um, again, because bales are inconsistent, some of them actually wouldn't, some of them actually wouldn't come down. So I actually had to, in case you missed it, Matt, I had to do, a, I had to do an extra step basically of, of shaving some areas. So basically what I had was some of them came down, some of them didn't. So I had a little bit of this going on. So anywhere where the bales didn't want to compress far enough, I had to basically shave out some straw. And that was, that was a, a painful task, it but it worked. Messy. So I got there, but, uh, but yeah, we learned a lot. Um, the straps worked well. The weak point is the buckle. The buckle will give before the strap will give the most of the time. Buckled. Um, so yeah, and looking back, not surprising. The buckle will either bend and deform out of place, or I actually had one literally snap. Um, so you can actually buy super heavy duty buckles, but I assume it'd be a lot more expensive. And, but uh, anyway, uh, it went pretty well. Uh, obviously a little slower than I thought as everything tends to do, but that's okay. Again, I'm in no hurry. The only thing that bothers me is I'm in a hurry. The the weather. <laughs> so so we're really trying hard to you get to get to get to a hurry. roof here um, <laughs> before we get some serious rain. So anyway, it's uh we're doing all right. We've got a nice little window still here. So I'm gonna try and get that wall on and we're gonna try and get those trusses up there. But uh we might get some rain before too long here. And that's gonna be fun seeing how we can cover this thing up before we actually have a roof on it. So I think we're gonna have to, unfortunately. But we'll see. Uh, I don't yeah. know if everybody, anybody else is uh, is still there, but uh, thank you very much. Thanks, for everybody, watching. for coming, as always. Uh, thanks for watching the videos. I'll probably try and get one out pretty soon because, like I said, I was close to having one, and I just didn't finish the step, so that's why I didn't put it out. So I'll probably put it out pretty soon here. And then maybe, maybe another one next Tuesday. I always shoot for Tuesdays. Um, maybe we'll be able to show that wall going up. Uh, but that's it. That's all we've got going on. The wall's the next step. Trusses behind it. And sheathing and, and metal as close behind that as possible. And hopefully before we get any serious rain. So thanks, enjoy, everybody. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your evening. Oh. <laughs> enjoy your holidays. There's good Timmy. Night, hey, Tim. Tim. I think Tim's probably been um, there. He's thanks, Wayne. Good night. good night, everyone. All right, everybody. Have thanks for coming. Week. We'll see you next time. Good night. Night. And...